Hey everyone, so welcome back to uh, another mini lesson where we're going to solve a math problem from Suga Kuchoshi Gakuen. So uh, I'm making these videos more structured, you can say, like, well, at least how I'm going to present it. So onwards! Lesson 2, the clock math problem. So this is the main math problem in this episode. But first, let's, uh, let's get a little bit of background info about what happens in this episode. So, I'm trying to make it short and sweet, but uh, there's a little, quite a few things that happen. But I'll try not to take too much of your time about it. So, Kazuki is once again accused of doing something he didn't. This time, he's accused by Mami of stealing a math test that was supposed to be given out that day. Now, Kazuki didn't do it, but everyone knows that he would have, like, the most motive to steal the test. However, they find out that only the math question, like, the, the question part of the test was stolen and not the answers. Now, if you were a cheater, you'd steal the questions and answers, or just the answers. Memorize it and plop it onto your test when you get it. Mm. But, uh, you know, only the questions were missing, so it's like, hmm, I guess you could solve the questions and, you know, get an answer, but doesn't mean it's the right one, right? And, you know, since it's Kazuki, well, uh, what are the chances that he'll get it right? So a few things happen, and Nina comes to the same conclusion. Like, if Kazuki did steal, steal the questions, he should, be, he should be able to get some of them right, but she knows that he's pretty dumb. Actually, more like he just hates math, so... <sighs> so Nina proposes a competition against Mami where they will have to guess whether Kazuki will get ma like uh, a series of math questions right or wrong. So uh, a series of math questions are asked to Kazuki starting from very difficult, so university level, all the way to first year of middle school, which is the last question. And so... Um, in the first year middle school one, which is the clock question that I'll cover in just a minute, it's like, Kazuki actually tries to solve it versus all the other times where he actually writes, I don't know, leaves it blank, like, he this doesn't even bother. This one he actually tries, right? He's like, I'm not that stupid. He actually almost gets the question right, and like, Nina's impressed, but she knew he wouldn't get it right. But the uh, mommy thought he was going to get it right, so she's, you know, held up her little uh, card saying that he he would get it right but you know he didn't so Nina wins and Kazuki is scot-free again for being accused of something he didn't do again all right so on to the math question so here we go it's three o'clock and in one hour it will be four o'clock question is between three and four o'clock at what minute and what second will the two hands overlap so here we go. So, just redrew the clock. And does everyone remember what the square means? It means 90 degrees. And another piece of information you need to know is that the uh, circle is 360 degrees, right? So 360 degrees. So let's go on to a little bit of things about a clock that we need to know to solve this problem. For the long hand, the minute hand here, for it to do a 360, that takes it 60 minutes, right? So we'll do the following. 360 plus 360 degrees divided by 60 minutes equals 6 degrees per minute. So that means every minute the minute hand moves, it will move by 6 degrees. So what about the short hand? How long will it take it to go around? Um, <coughs> How long will it take to go around? Like 360 degrees. So that takes 12 hours, right? Let's do the following. Cover this up right here. <laughs> so we'll do 360 degrees divided by 12 hours. Now we want it in minutes, right? As we see for the 60, for this one up here, the longhand one. So we're going to use a conversion factor. So we all know that one hour equals 60 minutes and vice versa. They're equivalent. So we can use this, so conversion factor. So we cross out the hours, and because uh, they cancel each other out. 
I will multiply through. So 360 degrees divided by 12 times 60 minutes will give you 0 0.5 degrees per minute. So that's how much the hand moves, the short hand moves every minute. Now some of you might think you just have, you know, divide by 12 between these two. So simple. But units is really important and that's why I want that's what I want to stress. And uh, so let's like just keep your units. It's really important to write it out. Don't be like, oh yeah, just divide by 12, multiply by 2, whatever, whatever. And like, no, no. Like really, it's got to be logical. So that's why I'm really focusing on the units. Alright, this means after one minute, the long hand moves by 6 degrees while the short hand moves by 0.5 degrees. Now, Nina writes this. She writes this uh, equation here. At first I didn't get it, but she actually means the following. The long hand moves 5.5 degrees more than the short hand each minute. So let's go back to our diagram here. So after one minute, this will move by 6 degrees and this will move by 0 0.5 degrees, right? Um, so relative to each other, the long hand moves more than the short hand by 5.5 degrees. This is actually important. So we're going to use this number. Let's go back to the diagram again. Alright, so we need to do the overlapping part of this problem which is the main question. So how do we do that? So the long hand and short hand are separated by 9 degrees. So basically this long hand needs to overcome this 9 degrees, but the short hand keeps moving. That's why we had done this, right? So basically we're only going to focus on the long hand. And so we have the 5.5 degrees more, so we're going to use that number. So we're going to do 9 degrees divided by 5.5 degrees uh, per minute. So this equals 16.36363636 minutes. So this bar over two numbers means these two numbers will keep repeating over and over and over. Try it on your calculator, you'll see what I mean. Alright, but some of you might not be able to know how to manipulate this part. So when you have a fraction then in the denominator, you can actually flip this fraction and you can then simply multiply it instead of divide. So it will look like this. So when we flip the fraction, the 5.5 is on the bottom, and the 1 minute on the top, and we can cancel out the degrees. So, and we come out to the same thing, of course, 6.36. Now we get the minutes, and this is what Katsuki figures out too. But him, he doesn't actually use math, he actually uses his analog watch. So he actually plays around with it until he sees the two hands overlap. He only gets 16, but he's unable to figure out the seconds, because, you know, he's doing it through a trial and error approach. Well, let's figure out the seconds. So let's take this repeating decimal here. So I get from here to here, you just do minus 16. Right. I'm keeping the repeating decimal so we can get as close as possible to the answer. Well, to the real, real answer. Alright, so we'll take this. Minutes times 60 seconds over 1 minute. This is another conversion factor. Because you all know that there are 60 seconds and 1 minute. So they're equivalent. Counts out the minutes. So we get seconds. We get 21.8181818 seconds. So we'll just put a bar, try on your calculator, you'll see what I mean. <clears throat> so this is approximately 22 seconds. So the final answer is, the hands will meet at approximately 16 minutes at 22 seconds from 3 o'clock. So at approximately 3, 16, and 22 seconds, the two hands will overlap here. Alright. So that's how you solve the problem. Okay, so... It seems that every week, um, the the math problems are teaching us the you know a new concept. Well, to those who like don't know any math or have forgotten about it, so but they introduce a new concept every time, or like more like focus on a concept every time. All right. So last week we focused on trigonometry. All right. So we looked at triangles, comparing them, looking angles. You know, brought back things from last time. You brought back the square, which means 90 degrees. So, and also, I, I brought back the squiggly line for approximately. Alright, so what about this week? This week is actually dimensional analysis. So when I was focusing on the units, that's what I meant. It's when you keep track of your units to make sure that you 
you're calculating the right thing because a lot of times you might plug in some numbers together but you totally get the wrong answer. Even though you have all the right numbers, they're just not in the right place. So the units actually help you figure out where you're going and how you get there. So for here, it's like you want to get to minutes. So how this fraction is placed is kind of important. Like you could have done one hour over 60 minutes, but had you performed that operation, you've got, you would have gotten a unit of hour squared over minutes. That doesn't make much sense. Now over here, we want to get seconds, we have to use a conversion factor. So, um, in a lot, of, a lot of science courses, when they use math, they'll have a lot of this dimensional analysis that you need to use. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not something that you want to take shortcuts with, because it's actually something that will, like, tell you that you're actually solving this question right, and you'll be able to, like, find your mistakes very quickly if you stay very consistent with this method. So that's something to remember. All right, so um, that was lesson two. Um, I hope I explained it clearly. And oh, one more thing. This three points means therefore. It's what you use when you conclude a, a problem. This one's not like a big problem or anything. It's just, I don't know, I just wanted to introduce it and explain what this equation was that Nina wrote. So yeah, if you solve a real long problem and you want to see the answer, you can use therefore. Like I could have written like therefore right here. Alright, so I hope it was explained clearly and I um, hope uh, you learned quite a bit from the concept of dimensional analysis and how important it is. And uh, I hope to see you next week. Bye!